imagine if we could create new materials out of thin air? And that these materials could take care of your own and the whole Earth's demand for electricity. Imagine that your jackets are made of solar cells, for example, or that all cars are coated with them. We would never have to think about electricity again, because all of the houses, cars, clothes, indeed everything is covered with solar cell material. This is not as far-fetched as you may think. All we need is the right kind of plastic molecules. This is exactly what Ellen Moons and her team at Karlstad University are developing. They are working with plastic molecules, polymers, that absorb light, in order to find the best way to create future materials that can conduct electricity. Polymers are very suitable materials for solar cells because they are flexible materials, and in this way the solar cells can be made in an inexpensive way. Ellen's quest for new materials has led her all over the world. Studying physics in Belgium, taking her PhD in Israel, having worked in the Netherlands, Switzerland, England, basically anywhere she could find the opportunity to work on creating a new electrically conductive material. And then I heard the news from Cambridge about these polymers. Uh, they could emit light, and they could be used for uh, light-emitting diodes. So um, I was very fascinated by that, and uh, I went there to Cambridge and uh, started to work on that. And it was the opportunity to work on solar cells made of plastic that brought her to Sweden. Det här är väldigt fint. Det påminner mig lite grann det vi såg när vi testade systemet. Och det är just den här inre strukturen som vi tror kan spela ganska stor roll också för hur det faktiskt fungerar. Ja. So that's been on them, uh, new instrument. <laughs> Since her coming to Karlstad University, Ellen's focus has been to learn all she can about the structures of the material in order to be able to control their properties, thus determining how they will function. So we take a bottle of polymer and uh, we take a little bit of it, weigh it carefully, and then we add some solvent to make a polymer solution. To create this material, one more molecule is added to the mixture, which is then put onto a glass plate. And in the lab, in a small scale, we do this by spin coating. This is more or less like painting. Uh, on a large scale, you could uh, imagine doing this in a printing machine. You could print the solar cells and make them as long as you want. Ellen Moons and her team are working with special plastic molecules which absorb light. Generating electric current requires two different contacts, which are added in a controlled environment. So we add contacts to this layer, both to the front and the back side so that the charges that are generated by the light can be taken out of the solar cell. And then we have electricity. These plastic polymers provide endless opportunities for bringing forth materials with properties and functions we never imagined could exist before. As the solvent evaporates and the film dries out, the different molecules don't want to be near each other and so they move away from one another. This creates a separation in the material called a phase separation that builds a specific structure within the layer. It is this phase separation that makes it possible for the material to conduct electricity. Depending on how the scientists mix and dry the solution, the material becomes good to different degrees, which determines how many electrons are released and move toward the contact. So this is the other pixel of the same device, right? Yeah, yeah. the pixel of the same device. Mm -hmm. And how much? 
Also 0.85 volts. Yes, exactly. Later, Ellen and her team determine how effective the solar cells are, how well they gather the sun's energy and convert it into electricity. That's a very good cell. Absolutely. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. They analyze how the structure looks in order to figure out how they might want to reconfigure it. The biggest problem today is the stability. You want to be able to have a stable solar cell that will last for a long time. You don't want to have to throw it away after a short time. But what we want to do is we want to understand really well what happens in the layer, in the interaction between these molecules, because those can give different structures. And if we understand the structures that are formed in the layer, we can then change them, and this will give more efficient and more stable solar cells. Then we can put solar cells anywhere. We can put them in clothes, in sails, in tents, anywhere where you need electricity. Ellen Moon's research could be one of the keys to the cheap and clean electricity of the future, both for the planet and for you. Here I have a trucked solar cell. You can see if it can load the mobile. Look at it. Yeah. 